Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I just want to do a quick video on the installation of my Pioneer Mini Split on our back porch. This used to be a screened in porch, but we never used it. And so we decided to turn it into a Four Seasons room. I did all the work myself except for the electrical work. It's about 275 square feet. And there's the mini split. So this is the 12,000 BTU uh, 115 volt option. It's rated for 250 to 450 square feet. I think the 9,000 BTU unit would have worked fine out here, but we have these large windows. So I wanted to make sure that the sun wouldn't overpower the unit. And the 12,000 BTU works is very well. Keeps it very cool out here. We actually had the birthday party yesterday and that door was open most of the time. And it still still just kept it real comfortable in here the whole time. And actually our power bill went down the first month we used it just because a lot of the air will trickle into the living room area and it kind of affects the thermostat in there. So our main unit didn't run nearly as much. Anyway, so basically you have several options. You got a cool mode, a heat mode, an auto mode, and there's a dry mode. It's like more like a dehumidifier mode. So basically we just keep it on auto and it'll just bounce between heating and cooling based on the temperature that you're set at. And it'll also adjust the fan on the internal unit and the external unit as it sees fit. So they're both variable speed, the fan on the inside and the exterior unit, which is, makes it run really efficient. Anyways, I'm gonna walk outside to the external unit. My neighbor's unit might be running, so you might be hearing that buzzing, but it's very quiet, the actual mini split itself. So let's go look at that one outside. So there it is. Yes, my neighbor's unit is running over there. It's kind of buzzing, but this is trying to get you an idea of what it sounds like up close. But it is running, probably mid speed, maybe a little bit higher than that. There's a couple options to do on the exterior unit. They have a wall mount, but I didn't like the wall mount because it holds it really close to the wall, about four inches. And I want to make sure that I had enough clearance back here. So I put about a foot clearance and I poured the cement myself, or the concrete, and mounted it to the concrete. Let me see the drain right here. Line set going up. So they have different line set lengths. I got the 16 foot length and then just cut it to fit the length that I needed. And I got the covers as well. Let's go back inside here. So one of the misconceptions is that you need to put the external unit down away from the window so you don't hear it or whatnot. I can tell you right now, we do not hear that external unit at all. Also, it's on the south side, so it gets a lot of sun. And some people say that affects the cooling. It doesn't affect the cooling at all, from what I can tell. I actually measured the vent temperature coming out, and it's right at 46 degrees Fahrenheit. So it blows nice and cool. Anyway, so this is not an install video. It's just kind of an overview of how I feel about the unit and what we think about the unit. And obviously we love the unit. So we've had it about three months. So um, I installed it myself. I will do some install videos or some tip videos. If you guys are interested, just go ahead and subscribe and let me know what you want to see or whatever in the comments. But here's a few kind of tools that you might not have laying around that you will need for the install. So, so you're definitely going to need a vacuum pump because you're going to have to draw a vacuum on the line set. And with the vacuum pump, you're going to need some gauges. 
Now with the gauges, you it already comes pre-charged for the line set, so you don't have to add any refrigerant or anything. You're just gonna basically just read and make sure that you're, you got a vacuum drawn and that there's no leaks. Some people might say you need a micron meter. You'd absolutely, it would, you can use a micron meter, but being a DIY, I don't, you won't need that. Just use, you have the gauges here. Um, per the instructions from Pioneer, you did not need a micron meter. Some professionals will have a micron meter, but you'd be fine with just the gauges. Also, if you're not familiar with working with copper piping, you might want to pick up one of these bad boys. It's a torque wrench. Definitely don't want to over torque the flare nuts because the uh, copper is real soft. So you don't want to over tighten it. You don't want to under tighten it. So I would advise getting one of those. You can always buy it and sell it after you're done using it. And then a flaring tool for flaring your copper lines. And you're going to need a little hole cutter for the wall. So your lines can run through to the external between the units. You definitely need one of these. It's a 5 16 to quarter inch adapter. It's basically a vacuum port so you can actually hook the pump up to it. And a reamer tool. This, this will get all the burrs and everything off the ends of the copper lines when you're done cutting them prior to flaring them. So real quick, you know, price-wise, I got the pump and the gauge set together. They're about $100. The flaring tool by itself is about $25. And this torque wrench was about $100 on eBay. Little hole cutter, they're actually pretty expensive. This was about $18. And this is a two and a half inch hole cutter. The little port conversion was, I believe it was $12. And then that reamer tool is about nine dollars you'll definitely need some other tools but these are just kind of some of the tools that you would probably not have laying around the house anyway if you guys want to see you know just some tip videos on how i installed everything maybe you want to see how i actually did the concrete work or did the outside unit just go ahead and subscribe or make a comment and let me know what you want to see and I'll, I'll try my best to make a video about it. I'm just going to get close to here so you can see if you can hear it. I will say that the uh, little louvers, they go up and down. You can get them to go up and down and move. I just keep it fixed. Feels really good. Another bonus with this installation was we wanted to have a backup option in case the power were to go out. So I got a generator hook up to our breaker box. And if we ever lose power to the unit, this whole back patio can be powered with the generator. And we can have a heating and cooling option while the power is out. Also, had we tied this into the main unit, we'd have to run duct work and then it probably would make our main unit undersized. So with the mini split, we avoided all that and it turned out great. Got the little LED display on the outside there. I don't know if you can see that. Got it set to 70. That front cover actually lifts up. So this way, and there's two little filters in there you can pull out and just vacuum and put right back in the reusable. So I do that once a month, piece of cake. Anyways, if you got any questions about the mini split, again, this is the Pioneer 12,000 BTU, 115 volt unit. It's a 19 sear. Price, I paid $690 for the unit. That's with the line set. And I also paid $40 on top of that for the line set cover. So with taxes, shipping and everything, you're looking at about $730 is what I got into it. Then I had to pay for the tools, which I expect to get some of my money back on that. So actually I might keep that flaring tool. That's just a nice little thing to have. Okay, well, if you guys got any questions about the patio or the unit, um, 
I did my homework for two or three months. I decided on the Pioneer just because it was, the reviews were outstanding. I had a little bit of experience with an HOA I used to serve around where we installed one and it worked great. I will say that their, uh, their tech support is awesome. I was sending mess just direct messages to them about the install several times and they gave me all the information I needed to do the install myself. And it was just a, it was a good experience with them. So if you have any questions about the unit, let me know. Any questions about the patio? Any questions about how I did that? I'll be glad to answer those. And if you want to see some steps and tips of a video on how I installed this, just go ahead and subscribe and make a comment below and I'll be glad to get back to you guys. Let's get back out here and I'll show you one more snapshot of the outside unit. Again, that buzzing is my neighbors. This one's really quiet. All right, I'll put the uh, links to the unit that I bought and some of the tools in the description below if it helps you. And go ahead and uh, make a comment. Let me know what you guys think. In closing, the big question is, could you install this unit yourself? And my answer to that is you absolutely could install it yourself if you have just a basic knowledge and skill set using basic tools. If uh, you are a beginner or have not used many tools, then you might consider having this installed by a professional. But if you do have a little bit of knowledge, a little bit of skill set, a little bit of handiness to you, then you could absolutely do it yourself as long as you have a extra set of hands to help you with the line set. All right, if you guys have any comments, please leave them below. Subscribe if you want to see some future videos. And uh, if you want to see some future videos on some tips on how I installed this unit or some kind of basic steps or some detailed steps, just let me know and I will uh, do my best to get them to you. Thanks for watching. Bye.